people of the world watching car reviews on the internet. Welcome to this, the 2023 Toyota Corolla All-Track Hybrid. <laughs> It's not called an all track. That's a missed opportunity. They totally should have called this thing the all track because it is. It's kind of a successor to the old all track wagons. This is satisfying. I don't know why. There's no hitch, but technically it'll tow 1500 pounds. That's stainless. A little bit of a pea shooter on it. Look at the dainty little link for the automatic headlight adjusters. That's a pinky bone. The Corolla Cross utilizes a double wishbone multi-link rear suspension, all steel in construction. Huh? 20, 21 millimeter in diameter rear anti-sway bar paired with contains nitrogen. House blend Toyota dampers and housed in the center of it is the heart and soul of the all wheel drive on demand system, which is a self-contained 600 volt DC permanent magnet synchronous electric motor. The motor generator is a dual shaft unit, so it is capable of powering either one of the rear wheels and also it has recuperation capabilities to charge the battery pack that produces 84 newton meters of torque or 62 pound feet and 41 horsepower. Okay, time to get nerdy. The XG15 built upon the TNGAC platform in the XSE trim weighs in at 3,430 pounds. I just made a robot horny somewhere. The mid pipe's the size of a breakfast sausage. What the hell? Were there robots playing arts and crafts on the assembly line that day? What is this little welding experiment? <laughs> is this some kind of a shield to protect idiots with sawzalls from stealing it? The beauty of an electric motor for your all wheel drive system. Look at all the room to access the back half of the engine and the steering rack right there. There's no drive shaft in the way. While it no longer requires a drive shaft, it does require an electrical corridor for your front and rear propulsion connection. As far as the transmission goes, you only have one option available with this hybrid model, and it is the Iazin eCVT, but it is not a CVT transmission. That's just bad marketing or labeling. It has nothing to do with being a CVT. It has a planetary gear set and two electric motors. You can get a good look at it by sticking my camera up the car's ass. You don't have to take my word for it. Up front, you have an all steel in construction McPherson strut style suspension. Front anti-sway bar measures in at 25 millimeter in diameter. Lilac is the new cool zinc finish. That's what I like to see. All plastic and steel. There's no hairy cardboard. This is actually designed to last. It actually has little projector LED fog lights. Those are nice. And it has the Brahma bowl. If you smell what the rock is cooking. Okay, time for the braking test. No one behind me. Ready, set, go. Wow. Oh, that was more aggressive than I thought it was gonna be out of this thing. The nose dived pretty hard. There was a lot of aggressive ABS feedback. The stopping distance was average, but almost like a little bit, a little bit of spice to the brakes. That braking was just made possible thanks to a single piston floating caliper with a 304 millimeter or 12 inch front rotor. The wheel, ugh. It is an 18 by seven wrapped in a 225-55 Goodyear Assurance Finesse tire. Plastic fender liner, no hairy cardboard. Again, good job, Toyota. Plastic rockers, protect them from rock chips. Out back, things get even smaller with a little microscopic single piston floating caliper and an 11.1 inch or 289 millimeter rotor with the same size wheel and tire as you get up front. Now that is the Easter egg of all Easter eggs. There is a silhouette partially of a vehicle inside the plastic fender liner. And you can see the roof line, the windshield, and the like front and rear wheel arches. That is, that's like plastic denim. That's a new one. In the name of science, it is now time to give it the beans. Bolstering assessment, you know, 
It's enough bolstering to shake the car. There's actually some bolstering to these seats. Did not expect that. Leatherette on the side with black and gray striped cloth in the center that, yep, I did that on purpose. And they are heated. That was on. No wonder my butt's on fire. As far as drive modes go, there is a little flipper right in front of the shifter that says drive mode on it. Eco, fitting for this vehicle, normal, and sport. As well as if you have enough charge in your battery, a full electric mode. But that only works up to 20 miles per hour if you have enough battery juice. Can tap this over into manual sport mode and use it like a sequential or via steering wheel mounted paddles. Defeat traction control via this button. Hold it down, everything is off. And uh, yeah, give this thing a little assistance and let it eat. Ready? Go. It actually let me launch it. That's crazy. Go. Go. That's good. It's um it's not fast. It's it's tipping into the realm of almost could have a bit of quick. Good pop. That's uh, kind of heavy. Where the hell does that thing go? It's a tricky location. I almost missed that. Underneath the hood of the 2023 Corolla Cross is the Dynamic Force M20A FKS, which is a two liter all aluminum dual overhead cam naturally aspirated four cylinder that produces 150 horsepower at 6,000 RPM and 139 pound-feet of torque at 4,400 RPM. But keep in mind that includes this right here, your eCVT transmission, which houses not one, but two electric motor generators, one for starting and electrical generation, as well as the other one for propulsion and battery charging. And then the rear motor generator. All of those systems combined with the gasoline engine produces 196 horsepower. And because of the fact you got those two electric motors for starting and charging in the transmission, there are no accessory drive belts on the front half of this internal combustion engine. The AC compressor, which you can barely see down there, is electrically driven along with the power steering. Zero W16 oil, it's literally almost like water. For better weight distribution, the lithium ion battery is under the back seat and then the 12 volt battery is in the rear of the car. Wireless phone charger, or maybe if you wrap a potato in tin foil, no, don't do that. This is a fun color. There's actually quite a few fun colors available on this thing. Start things off with a challenge, hill climb. Now I just reviewed the Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness a couple weeks back. There's a link up above to that video if you wanna check it out. I would say that that is a strong contender against this vehicle. However, the Wilderness is way more equipped for off-road because it's an off-road package. This doesn't have the suspension, wheels and tires, or the ground clearance to match. So we're gonna do this hill climb, which is arguably more challenging in some aspects. It just doesn't have the articulation as the other hill that I did the cross track on. Now I do not have any off-road modes. So uh, first we'll try it with no traction control. I'll put it in sport mode. We'll see how this all wheel drive system works. And I didn't let any air out of the tires either because I never do that to keep things fair. Really slow run up at it. Oh yeah, it's not gonna climb this at all. <laughs> Not even remotely close. Whoa, it spun the tires. You can smell rubber. All right, we'll try traction control on. Nice slow run up at it. No, it wouldn't even remotely get up the hill. So this all wheel drive system is more of a help you in the winter type situation, not off-road capable. It looks like a little rally wagon. So I'm gonna put a little rally wagon to work with the rally special stage. I don't have a lot of faith in the suspension being valved accordingly for this type of off-road. So I'm not gonna do it at 10 tenths. I'll, I don't even know if that's a real fraction. Ready? Go. It's spinning the tires like crazy. 
I mean, it fights for traction, but I'm, again, I'm not on very good tires for this type of stuff. All right, staying fairly neutral, a little bit to oversteer and a little bit to understeer, but overall, kind of neutral. It's a little bit playful. Yeah, super neutral. There, I didn't detect any understeer whatsoever, which is nice. Uh, the back end started to want to come out a little bit, and then I felt the robots kind of cupping it back into place. It's not over intrusive though. Not bad, better than I thought it was going to do, because this isn't really marketed as an off-road package or something super aggressive. It's fun though. I have never been more nervous about driving through this gravel pit than I am in this thing right now. I don't want to get stuck. It's just like driving through a deep gravel driveway, right? This is this is a good test for the all-wheel drive system. I hope I don't get stuck. I don't get stuck. I, I got stuck. Jeez. Oh man. Yeah, it's starting to dig a hole that front right tire. You can see where I started to bury a wheel right there. This is the first gravel pit test fail. Uh, I want to say 95% of this is probably these tires. And if I deflated them a little bit, it might stand a better chance. But I don't do that to any vehicles I test. I keep them all at their standard regular inflated pressure. I don't want to give anything an unfair advantage. <laughs> the windshield wiper is like a quarter of the size of the glass. Oh, power gate. Little JBL thumpy boy back here. The uh, back seat's pretty barren back here. There are some USB charge ports and a very well-placed cup holder. I'm not much of a seamstress, but something tells me you can't sew plastic. <laughs> there's, there's stitching in the plastic. I don't have a map pocket. I don't know if people still carry, does any of you watching carry a paper map still? All right, there's nothing useful that's gonna come out of my mouth anymore. Padded? Barely. Kinda squishy. Oh look, someone left me a tip. Automatic climate control, because this one's fully loaded with physical buttons, no going through a menu to access it. And speaking of that menu, it's fairly idiot proof. It does have factory navigation if you pay for it. Vehicle customization, utility. Okay. This one has the optional JBL sound system. It's a little expensive. You might be able to go better aftermarket on your own. However, your tweeters won't look as cleanly integrated as these A-pillar JBL mounted ones. This one has a hole in the roof. A spiritual successor to the original Corolla Alltrack, this is not. This would not hold a candle to that thing off-road because it doesn't have a mechanical all-wheel drive system like the other one did. And that's fine. Not everyone needs, that's not fine. I wanted it to be a spiritual successor to the original Corolla Alltrack. I also will not say this is a good competitor against the Subaru Crosstrek if off-roading is the prime focus. I'm sure it'll do great in snowy environments with some snow tires on there. Tires are the key with everything off-road. Where this thing does excel though is why people would buy this to begin with. The fact that it's a hybrid. Fuel efficiency on this thing is great. It doesn't matter how aggressive you drive it or how much you just let it sit and idle. I've been averaging 38 and a half miles per gallon. And for doing a car view, it's usually on the worst side of fuel efficiency range for a vehicle. For not having off-road valve suspension, it's not super rough off-road and this thing is quiet on the inside. There's actually not a ton of road noise in here. Nothing rattles other than my crap that I have rolling around on the floor. I would be careful adding options to one of these things though. I mean, where it starts at 27 grand for the hybrid, not bad. But when you start adding a JBL sound package and all that stuff, you're getting up into the $35,000 range. There's quite a few other things that you could get with that kind of money that would do a lot better in the all wheel drive department. It is now time for me to confuse a lot of you with my secret menu rating system, <laughs> starting with the bean score. And Corolla Cross gets a rating of, followed by, that I almost hit myself, cookie score. And this thing as equipped at just over $35,000, as loaded as you can get one of these, gets a rating of, followed by the wrench score and, Corolla Cross gets a rating of. Next is the meatball score assessment of off-road capabilities and Corolla Cross gets a rating of. 
Lastly, uh, the Penguin Square and this little acid-dipped wagon is getting a rating of It'd be fun if they stuck the three-cylinder turbo from the GR Yaris and Corolla in one of these things and all-wheel drive and actually made an all-track wagon from hell. That would be sweet. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this review. I'll see you soon with another. Bye.